This little wrecking ball is on sale in World of Tanks, so it's one of the best times that we can show off what the Cobra is all about. And of course, this was one on PC that was absolutely devastating. And we're going to see how it fares in World of Tanks console. So let's jump into the statistics of the vehicle where we can see what this tank is capable of. Why, when you see this in the game, you'll probably be thinking... Oh, that's not particularly too fun. And yes, the Cobra is a tank that has a whopping total damage. If you can clip with it, because it's an autoloader, it has four shells in the magazine with a one and a half second inch clip reload. And that damage in grand total when using the Hesh rounds that this tank has, 1960 damage. Yes, 1960, which ultimately is one of the highest damage tanks in the game, considering it's a medium autoloader. So, yeah, very, very, very powerful in terms of its total clip potential coming in lower than things like the Fosh 155, but this tank can output that damage very, very quickly, and it feels really, really nice when you can do it. So, what have we done with this vehicle? Well, we've scrapped all of these standard rounds. I just... Not that I don't see the point in them, I just not really bothered about them and that's because they have 268 pen which isn't that much more than the 210 pen that you get with your hash rounds and essentially yeah you lose out on about 130 damage which is significant if you are using the AP rounds but the problem is is that you know you don't really have any of the heat rounds or whatever anyway uh, to be able to deal with some of the heavily armored targets and most of the tanks that you come up against are going to be able to be penned with the hesh which is why i use the hesh and when you have not that many rounds i don't want to take a full clip of the ap even though it might be worth it for kind of some situations where you can deal the uh quite lower uh, but still decent 1440 damage with the AP. But we went with the Hesh because it's all about what this tank is. If I wanted an AP firing autoloader, I'd probably play the 57 Heavy or something like that. Um, or the TVP T5051. But we're not about that. We are all about the Hesh. And with the Hesh, you do gain some advantages, which are that you get 490 damage per shell, which is why you can deal just shy of 2000 damage in a clip. Now we've run the tank in a specific way such that we can improve the accuracy because yeah, the, yeah, the accuracy of this tank is not particularly great. So vertical stabilizers or gun stabilizers, as they're now known, are essentially the best thing that you can pick for this vehicle in terms of equipment, in my opinion, because of the fact that, yeah, your inch clip reload is horrendous and also your aiming time is horrendous as well. Uh, well, your aiming time in that intraclip reload, the disparity between the two is huge. So yeah, the dispersion, the aiming time, all mixed in together, makes this tank very painful to be able to hit things, at least reliably, unless you're right up close and personal. And in terms of using this tank in other ways, we've ran it with improved ventilation to improve the damage per minute that this vehicle has because it's not amazing. It also then gets advanced optics as well so that we can boost our view range to potentially get any spotting damage from people that we may not have been able to spot if we didn't take the equipment. And considering that you can't take a gun loader because it's an auto loader uh, and every auto loader is the exact same in the game, um, therefore we have to use another piece of equipment equipment and we went with the advanced optics. Are there some opportunities to take traction system or advanced powertrain? Yes, entirely, but it's down to you. Do you want the extra speed? Do you think it's going to be worth it over being able to spot a little bit more? Which for me, I'd rather have the spotting potential to get that assistance damage where maybe we can get a better combined score than just being able to move a little bit faster as this tank isn't particularly too slow, 40 kilometers an hour, which make it kind of fun. Now there are a few better points about this tank, which is the 10 degrees of gun depression, which is really nice. Of course, damage per minute does suck, 1600 here. And that is with basically all of our bonuses other than adding in a commander, which is gonna make a big difference, but still not enough to make it one of the best mediums at the tier. And if we go on here now, there you go, 1962. Uh, aim time comes slightly further down, stuff like that, but yeah, overall still not brilliant. Now, 
if you were looking to purchase this tank as a premium tank to make you credits, remember this tank is not a premium tank, it is a reward premium tank which is essentially one that doesn't get any silver bonus it gets a five percent tank xp bonus but that is it there are no extra bonuses really other than the five percent extra free xp bonus as well but everything else it doesn't really affect your silver so if you're after silver don't purchase this tank thinking it's going to be great and of course the price tag of this vehicle is what twelve thousand gold right now so it's quite expensive and if we went to the store and had a look at how much gold costs for 12,000 you're looking about 36 to 40 pounds to be able to pick up this tank so it is very expensive and would I recommend it spending that much on just one tank in a game where you know you might not play a whole lot and you're a bit of a casual player then absolutely not but if you do play this game and you're really interested in just having a cool fun novel tank that is somewhat decent um, and is going to be a little bit fun this tank might be the sort of tank you're looking at but once again I feel like these sorts of vehicles are just super expensive um, and yeah for me probably not worth the gold that it's going to cost you but then again you know Cobra very interesting tank. Let's jump into the gameplay and see what this tank can do in a few clips. And so we kick off this game with a bang and that is on Nebelberg which is the first replay that we do have today which is one of the newer maps in World of Tanks console. Hopefully you've been enjoying it. I have no idea. I find it a pretty okay map. I feel like it's got a little bit of something for everyone which is always good and I don't feel like it's too one-sided to any particular tank class like you you see with things like Ensk or things like Ruinberg where heavy tanks typically a little bit better um, and where you find yourself in some other vehicles not particularly performing too well but straight off the bat we're using the Cobra we're gonna go into the middle and hopefully get a few shots on some unsuspecting tanks like for example the AMX 1390 who mm, didn't quite realize that he'd come up against the Cobra and there you go 1200 damage in just three shots we take a quick reload uh, because you don't you don't want to be basically sat there with just one shell in the magazine for 20 seconds and then realizing oh uh, maybe I should actually reload so we reload instantly want to get as many of those rounds back in so we can deal the damage again and come away with hopefully another 1200 damage from a little bit of a trade with some of the other opponents now this isn't particularly the greatest situation uh, we are potentially going to have to duke it out with heavy tanks I'm a little bit concerned about that we don't want to push into them all too much but so instead we pull all the way around and hopefully we can get into a position to deal a little bit of damage uh, going for the tracking shot on the conqueror I was hoping we might be able to pen him which appears like we could maybe I should have aimed just that little bit better uh, problem with pushing here is you can get hit by tank destroyers that are in the base potentially but it's not a guarantee whatsoever so instead we pushed out back down to here and we see that the enemy uh, M48 pattern for some unbeknownst reason to me or 59 pattern even uh, has decided to try and YOLO the base where yeah we've still got two people sat in base along with the artillery and another two people very close to him as well I'm surprised no one has hit this guy other than the 97 damage that he just took and oh for god's sake we've now got a conqueror who's yoloing as well and uh oh there's a medium tank behind us too so instead we push over we'll put a one speculative shot i wasn't expecting to hit and the second one of course that like the least aimed one there manages to actually hit um and of course getting a little bit lucky there but still two rounds in the clip i'm wondering do i take a reload we do go with it because want to get all of those shells in the clip so we can farm up some more damage as the game comes to a close or as we find someone else we don't want to get caught out with only two rounds in the magazine like I said earlier and maybe you bounce one or maybe you don't do the damage that you're expecting to uh, which does happen in a tank that fires Hesh because you never know sometimes it can go slightly to the wrong location hit the tracks or hit a space piece of armor and you don't do any damage um, so yeah just keep that in mind when you are playing these tanks is that you want to be super switched on with when you should switch your ammo now in this game we're going to push towards this e50 uh, the e50 here is of course focusing our team he's got his backside to us so we're going to come up from that back hopefully find his engine and there you go first shell in second shell in sets him on fire uh oh feels like a bad 
bad uh, mistake by the E50 to give his backside to the Cobras. Uh, yeah, this tank is uh, not very forgiving if you do that. And it doesn't take long for you to farm him up. We didn't even need to fire the third shell in the magazine there. Um, but yeah, I mean, setting him on fire, easy as you like. An extra 1,100 damage uh, from what I believe. But either way, we've done 3,500 damage. It's not a particularly amazing game in a tier 9, but I wanted to show the average kind of sorts of things you can expect in this tank, the sort of plays you want to be going for, and of course not every game is the perfect game where you can come up against someone who's giving you their backside or someone that's able to just let you farm up them for, for tons of damage or you know you find yourself up against heavy tanks which you can't actually pen regardless of the AP or Hesh. It sometimes happens things like the E100, the Maus, you're not going to be able to pen them very easily unless you're looking down on top of them uh, which can be a big benefit but yeah we don't manage to do that right here and instead rather than trying to hunt down those other tanks we go for the artillery here. We've got a Leopard which maybe we can get some more damage on please please come back doesn't look like we're going to be able to unless of course he yolos and yeah we're stuck on 4264 damage i'm trying to drive into a big stone wall which uh yeah is a is a fantastic idea would recommend it um but yeah not too great um but there you go 4264 damage 240 block we're going down and chasing this kpz uh, but we have got a 20 second reload which i am expecting not to be able to get any more damage in this game but it's at this point i want to ask what sort of things you think uh, you want to see on the channel and also if you've been enjoying the content or you want to see more or you want to see more edited videos or uh, kind of more hyped up videos where you see all sorts of different things then let me know in the comment section down below and also what you think of the Cobra because uh, yeah this tank was definitely one I really enjoyed even if it isn't as good as it is on PC I can guarantee that it isn't as good um, but it definitely is powerful but let's jump into another one since we're here and we want to see some more and today's Second gameplay is on Westfield and we are playing in the Cobra, taking a quick look at what we can pen on the enemy team and then we can make a move as to what we need to do. Now obviously usually I would recommend actually moving whilst checking the scoreboard. Uh, don't quite know what I was doing, probably AFK a little bit at the beginning, maybe I'd uh, drop my controller, happens all the time for some reason. Obviously got butterfingers but either way. Um, moving forward now to try and get into an early position which is what this tank can be really impactful for is if you can get into those early positions uh, and you find yourself feeling pretty good about those positions yeah this tank can really rock uh, and definitely rock the boat of the enemy team so with the Cobra being uh, a snake or at least uh, named after a snake it certainly has a bite I apologize that is awful um, it seems to be coming a, a regular on this channel that we try and come up with the most disgusting uh, puns but either way we're gonna go into this location here on Westfield which it's okay as it currently is um, unfortunately between the PC this version it's not as strong because of the fact that there aren't as many bushes you don't get as much camo and you can get spotted quite easily here it doesn't quite work like that on PC but we do find ourselves a little hard case which has a uh, yeah a ton of spaced armor and I have no idea how we didn't actually manage to uh, to um, yeah how we did manage to actually pen him there uh, considering that he's in a pretty disgusting position now what's even worse about that is he was in fact in the clan which I apologize. I apologize, Mr. Uh, Clips, Clips clan member. Um, but yeah, either way, we've come into this location here. 940 damage in, and uh, Sam Terry with uh, his hard case is uh, going to find out what the Cobra can do in this game alongside the M46. And this is what I mean about this position. It's pretty strong as long as you aren't spotted. You want to remain behind the tree line. Sometimes you'll get YOLO by light tanks, but. There aren't any in this game. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, and there you go. Another pen somehow in the hard case and then another pen. Yeah, I feel I, I feel bad. Um, but either way, nice little 1800 damage at the beginning. The game gets pretty close as we come towards the end. Uh, and you'll see that as we move forward. And it actually inspired me to play another tank, which we'll be seeing in a video very, very soon. So stay tuned for that because... 
it's going to be a very interesting one. It was actually one of the highest damage games I have had in quite a while. Uh, and it, yeah, certainly felt pretty nice to play. But either way, at this point, the enemy team have got in the base. They're pretty close. They could spot me here, which is, yeah, it's, it's not good when you get spotted. Because at the end of the day, it's an open field. There is no cover. And it's quite hard to run away. Uh, the prime running away position is essentially back behind me. Uh, and down behind the uh, the kind of, uh, oh, what do you call it? Like the bridge? It's, it's not, I guess it's a bridge. But either way, um, 2,100 damage. I'm tempted to move up towards uh, where our heavy tank is fighting on the corner, but uh, given the fact that he's been taken out literally instantly, uh, I was thinking, yeah, that's probably not a good idea, especially in a tank that has about a 40 second reload between when it can actually fire. So we decide against that. Instead, we're going to push over this side where I was hoping we could get some damage on something like the Object 780, who's pushing through the center of the map, which is always a brilliant idea and I would 100% recommend. Oh, wait, no, sorry, sorry. Absolutely a terrible idea, but... We're going to find out why it's a terrible idea in just a second. Ooh, yeah, that worked out really well. <laughs> oh, dear. 2,900, though. We got a few pens into that guy, but this is the problem when you do get spotted. Obviously, he was very close to us, and so we have to kind of run away, moving back to this location, and then get undetected and hopefully do something from here. Uh, and the game, albeit, has been quite slow, which the Cobra usually offers since it is just generally a quite slow tank to work um, because you know you have that huge inscript reload and you can't pen everything you miss a shell you miss two shells you're kind of left high and dry or at least with a much well significantly decreased potential to deal damage now we go for the 57 heavy i was thinking about the damage here against the 705 but i wanted to take out the 57 heavy since i wanted to win now the batcher on the enemy team obviously making a yolo play here hitting me on the move with heat um but we we then don't manage to pen him which is actually super unfortunate it must have hit just the tracks of the batcher to not pen um but either way yeah not the worst result 3700 damage game is looking pretty tight at the moment because it's uh yeah nine on nine and they're in the cap and they've got one minute and 34 seconds left to cap so at this point i'm thinking we really need to start dealing some more damage and i'm going up to try and deal with this 704 or potentially any of the tds or any of these heavies that are going to be pushing forward but we do need to be careful of things like this t54 e1 who are going to be where they are right now we track him we find the side of his turret and bye bye that is how quickly you can remove the hit points of tanks with the Cobra and it feels amazing when you do and it feels only that much better when you're dealing it four shells to the back of something like a British medium or something like that you know if you crop up and find yourself up against one of those uh, yeah you can rack up nearly 2000 damage in such a short period of time leave them crying about how they got clipped out by a Cobra um, but it is rather difficult to reliably do that and so you do have to rely on having decent aim and positioning to be able to get away with some of these things. But either way, not a bad result whatsoever. 704 takes out our mouse, which, uh, yeah, not ideal. Um, and I'm a little bit hesitant to poke here. There's a ton of TDs in this game. And we don't want to get snapped by one of them, you know, like flicked onto or something like that. Because that would be really annoying. Um, and you never know, it can happen. We spot a TD over here. What is it? Uh, I don't know. We end up pulling back down that hill. We don't want to get hit by a TD or flicked by a TD. Um, the 50 TP, obviously thinking he's funny, getting hold down on the slope. We decide, yep, yeah, that's not an ideal scenario. Um, maybe we could just splash him to death because three rounds of HE potential to deal 100 and something damage every single shot but we don't know. We then get almost hit by something. Looks like it was a big boy, maybe the 705 or something else, um, who was obviously in between the two buildings where we were directly looking. 50 TP is now moving. And yeah, it's... Um, hopefully we can do something from this location. But as I say, Cobra, it's quite a slow one, and you've been seeing that in today's video. Um, 
But yeah, I'd be interested to see what you guys think, uh, how you would change this tank, if you think it's good, or um, what sort of other tanks would you prefer to play. Now we hit the E4, I start moving because I want to get out of the way, and then the E4 on the move, flicking me down the slope. Yeah, whilst reversing, whilst not looking in the right direction and just, uh, yeah, flicking over, manages to hit me. Brilliant. Always love it when that happens and now we are in a situation where we're having to rely on the teammates which, uh, as you all know, yeah, usually doesn't end up all too well and uh, yeah. Either way, let's skip to the results screen and I'll see you there. So here we go, victory at last. Our team did actually manage to secure the win. We did come top with 4,600 damage and the Valor there on the left really pushed me to actually jump in and play the FE2-4201 T95 Chieftain uh, and give that a whirl. So that will be next video, so stay tuned by that. And of course, subscribe if you did enjoy it. If you want to see anything else, let me know. And thank you very, very much for getting me to 16,000 subscribers. Your support and likes, anything that you do is just much appreciated. I just appreciate you even just watching the video. So it's uh, amazing to have you guys along. And hopefully the videos are useful, informative, educational, or just, you know, it's funny to watch me derp uh, and be an absolute uh, crapper. But either way, hopefully you did enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.